Hello, first graders. My name is Ms. Boyle, and you might have seen me if you were watching the videos from last week, but if not, I'm Ms. Boyle. I'm a reading teacher, and I teach at John Stanford International School, so shout out to John Stanford. And I also have a kiddo at Kimball Elementary, so I know a lot of those kids too, so shout out to Kimball, and shout out to all of you first graders. I am so glad that you are here watching these videos with me. I miss you guys so, so much, and I'm so excited that I get to share this time with you, even though I can't see you, even though I can't hear you, even though I can't be there to give you high fives, I'm still really excited. I really love giving high fives. It's been hard since Corona break, so we're going to give ourselves virtual high fives. And kids in my class have learned about something I call a flaming high five. So the way a flaming high five works is you rub your hands together like this really fast till your hands start to feel really, 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 really hot. And then poof, we give ourselves a high five. We give each other a high five. So we might be doing some flaming high fives after we do some really great reading together today. So if you haven't seen the, week, the video from last week, I just wanted to show you. This is my classroom. It looks very different than my regular classroom. But uh, it is full of flowers because I love flowers. Um, one of my favorite parts about spring are all the flowers. It is also full of books. And this right here is my favorite kid's book. This is the BFG. And it's written by Roald Dahl, which I think he is just the funniest kid's author. I love the way he writes. I love that he always has characters and like kind of awful things happen to these characters. Like in the BFG, there's these monsters and they're named, or these giants, and they have names like Bone Crusher and, and Baby Biter and things like that. And I think it's really funny. I think his books are really um, kind, of, kind of spooky, kind of scary, but kind of fun as well. And so this is my favorite book. Roll Doll, the BFG. You might have seen the movie. There is a movie of it. But anyways, I'm going to put this here in my classroom next to my other flowers and my other books. And we are going to get started today on the lesson. So if you watched last week, you know that we talked about wondering. Wondering about the book. That's something that good readers do. Well, we wanted to continue to do it this week. So we're going to continue to wonder about the book except we've got a new book this time. So we are going to um, wonder about a book, and we've learned a lot about different animals, or you have in your class, and you've learned about animals that live on land, and animals that swim in the sea, and we've learned about chameleons. Well, today, we're going to learn about birds. So before I even show you the book, I want you to think about what you already know about birds. Because remember, we talked about that's one thing that good readers do, is they make connections to information they already know. So what do you already know about birds? I'm going to give you a chance to think about it. Okay. Now this is the part that gets a little silly, because as I said before, I cannot see you, I cannot hear you, I cannot listen to you talk, but I still want you sharing. So this is where... You can share to a grown-up that's nearby. You can share to, share to a brother or a sister. Even if they're a baby, you can still share to them. You can share to a cat or a dog or a goldfish or a parrot. You can share to your teddy bear or your stuffed animal. You can even share to your imaginary friend that might be sitting right next to you. But when I ask you to share, I would love if you would still share out loud. Because even though I can't see it or hear it, I can still feel it. So, please share out loud. What do you already know about birds? You probably know a lot about birds, right? We see them outside all the time. So we're gonna read some more and see what else we can learn about birds. And we're gonna do it by reading this book. It is called Birds, Winged and Feathered Animals. And it is written by Suzanne Slade and it is illustrated by Kristen Kest. So we're gonna read this book together. All right. So this book has something really cool that um, a lot of nonfiction books have, and perhaps you've seen it before. It's a table of contents. It tells you what is in the book. So this book has a bunch of different chapters in it. And this table of contents lists all the chapters, tells you what page number they're on, and they all have titles. All of these chapters have titles. 
And as a good reader, I want to get my brain ready to think about this book before I start reading it. So I'm going to take a look at this table of contents and I'm going to skim the chapters and I'm going to take a look at them and see what I can learn just from the chapters. So chapter one is a world full of animals. Next chapter, feathers and wings, bones and blood, beginning as an egg, home sweet home, perching and water birds, hungry birds, flightless birds, strange birds. All right, so we've heard those chapter titles. You might be having some wondering already. So I want you to right now to think about what are you wondering about birds? Because remember, this is what good readers do. Hmm, do you have some wonderings? Are you ready to share to whoever it is, imaginary or real that is next to you? Go ahead and share. What are you wondering about birds? So hopefully you shared out loud. I have some wonderings as well. So I made some wonderings about birds. And this is what I'm wondering. I'm wondering, do all birds come from eggs? I don't know. Can all birds fly? And then on that last chapter that I read from the table of contents, it said strange birds. So I'm wondering, what makes birds strange? I've seen lots of birds. I've never been like, oh, that's strange. So we want to read what makes birds strange. So you might have other wonderings. You might have the same wonderings. It doesn't matter what wonderings you have, as long as you're making those wonderings and you're doing what good readers do and wondering about birds. So we're gonna go ahead and start reading this book and we're gonna continue to wonder as we read. So as we remember, the first chapter is a world, a world full of animals. Millions of animals live on our planet. Scientists classify animals or group them together by looking at how the animals are alike and different. So it says, scientists have found about 10,000 different kinds of birds. 10,000, that was a lot of different birds. 10,000 kinds of birds in the world. All birds have certain things in common. Oh, so they all have to have this. Feathers and wings, a backbone, lightweight bones. Lightweight means that they don't weigh, they have a light weight, they don't weigh very much and a four-chambered heart. They are warm-blooded and they hatch from eggs. So those are all things that birds have to have. Six of the more familiar, or six of the more familiar main groups of animals living on Earth are mammals, birds, reptiles, amphibians, fish, and insects. Let's take a closer look at birds. You can see the illustrator, Kristen Kest, she did a great job of showing all these different scientific diagrams or scientific drawings of different birds. You can see lots of different birds together. Very cool. Next chapter. Feathers and wings. All birds have feathers and wings. Feathers protect birds from the sun and keep birds warm, warm during winter. Feathers are also lightweight and help birds fly. Most birds have strong wings and can fly fast and far. Many travel hundreds of miles each year when they migrate to new places. Migrate, that might be a word that you've heard before, but maybe not. Migrate means to travel, to go. So right now, we're not doing a lot of migrating, we're staying at home, but birds, they migrate. They move from north to south and south to north. So here's our captions. It says, birds preen or clean their feathers often. They use their hard beaks to comb their feathers. All right, so I want us to think, what are some ways feathers help birds? So we know that all birds have feathers. I want you to think, what are some ways that feathers help birds? Okay, turn and talk to whoever or whatever is next to you. So, how? Why do they have to have feathers? We learned that birds have to have feathers. What are some reasons that birds need to have feathers? I bet you came up with some good answers. Let's keep reading. Next chapter, bones and blood. Every bird has a skeleton made of a backbone and other small bones inside its body. Animals with backbones are called vertebrates. Many bird bones have spaces of air in them. 
These light bones allow birds to fly better. Oh yeah, we read that vocab word, lightweight, and it's saying that their bones are very light because they have air in them. And look at that great scientific drawing there. So obviously not what a bird really looks like, but you can see what it looks like inside. You can see its bones, and then look, it did this zoom in right here, which is super cool. So it's showing you a big version of what the bone looks like, and you can see, I think all those dark spots there, that's all spots where air is. So that's what makes their bones so light, because if it was full of bone all the way through, it'd be a lot heavier, but because there's all those empty spots, it makes their bones a lot lighter. Birds have hearts with four chambers or large spaces. They are also warm-blooded animals. That means their body temperature almost always stays the same. We're warm-blooded too. Our body temperature always about stays the same. So here we've got Arctic turns. And it says, as they soar through the sky, birds breathe in a gas called oxygen with their lungs. Like people, birds need oxygen to live. So making a connection to us. That's nice that the author did that for us. It made that connection. It's like, maybe as you read, as I read that, I'm like, oh wait, we, read, we breathe oxygen too. And then the author wrote that. What good readers do, they make those connections. Beginning as an egg. A bird's life begins inside an egg covered with a hard shell. Most female birds lay their eggs in nests. A parent bird often sits on the eggs to keep them safe and warm until the young birds hatch. Parent birds bring food to their young until the young are old enough to leave the nest. Birds can fly a few weeks without, ha or sorry, birds can fly a few weeks after hatching. So these are barn swallows. And here's our caption. It says, most birds build their nests out of sticks, feathers, and grasses, but some do not. A small bird called a swallow uses mud and feathers to make its nest. So you can see it's kind of, it's kind of muddy and you can really see that. All right. So let's talk about what we learned about birds. Did you know, did you find anything surprising? What surprised you? Let's do a quick book walk to remind us what we learned. And then you're going to get a chance to turn and talk to your person about what surprised you. So here we learn about what all birds have and about their feathers and their wings and about their bones and their blood and then about their nests and their eggs and then that they leave the nest a few weeks after hatching or they learn to fly. All right, go ahead and share. What did you learn? What was surprising? All right, did you share? What were you surprised? Awesome. Now let's talk about another thing good readers do, right? Which is, where's my thing? Of course, wonder about the book. We wondered at the beginning while we started reading this book, Good readers don't just stop at the beginning and be like, oh, I wondered, I'm done. Nope, good readers keep wondering. So we wondered at the beginning of the book, now we need to wonder and in the middle of the book. So what else are we wondering? So here were our questions before. And do you have any other wonderings that you have? Maybe some of, your, some of what you read made you wonder more. Hmm, I have some wondering because it talked about the nest. I wonder, I'm wondering, how do they know how to build a nest? Like who tells them how to build a nest? I doubt they can just get on the internet and Google how to build a nest. They're birds. So how do they build nests? How do they build nests? Like how do they learn how? So that's one of my wonderings. You probably have some other things that you're wondering too. And that's awesome because that's what good readers do. So. I'm going to give you a chance to do your own wondering and your own reading of your book. So right now it's independent daily reading. This is the time where you spend 15 minutes reading. Hopefully you've been doing lots of reading because reading is awesome. And just because we're not in school doesn't mean that you don't read. So we've got to make sure that we're still reading. And one thing that we're going to do while we're reading is we're going to be, you guys are going to be filling out this piece of paper. Now you might have gotten this piece of paper printed out from your parents. And if you didn't, that's okay too. You can just use a blank piece of paper, okay? But if you did get it, we're gonna fill this out here. And this is for Monday, and it says, 
Write one thing you have learned and one thing you are wondering about. And there's space at the top for the title of the book. So you're going to write the title of the book, whatever book that you're reading. So for example, I would be reading, let's say I was reading a book about, um, well, we, for this book, we'd write birds, right? You're going to write whatever title of the book that you had. You're going to write down one thing that you learned. So while you were reading, what's one thing that you learned? And then you're going to write one thing that you're still wondering because good readers wonder all the time while they're reading. So 15 minutes of reading, you can go ahead and have a parent set a timer or you can set a timer on um, Alexa sets timers or whatever you have at home to set a timer with. I want you to do 15 minutes of reading and then I want you to grab this piece of paper or a blank piece of paper and I want you to write the title and one thing you learned and one thing you were wondering. All right, that was it for today, first graders. I will be doing another video and I hope you watch that one as well because we still need to read the rest of birds. We have not read it all. There's lots more to learn and wonder about birds. Till then, keep reading, stay safe, 